600 people live in the enclave, and part of the army's job now is to help make the area safe. Corporal Warburton is the second British soldier to die in Bosnia. In January last year, Corporal Wayne Edwards was killed by a sniper whilst patrolling the front line at Gorni Vakuf. As darkness fell tonight, the army remained at the scene. So too do hundreds of other mines that will need to be cleared before the warring neighbours on either side of the line can get on with the job of reconciliation. For Britain's 3,350 troops serving here with the United Nations, this tragedy shows, all too clearly, the dangers which are now a part of their crucial role in returning peace to Bosnia. Adam Holloway, ITN, Vitez. There's been a terrorist attack on a security forces base at Cross Maglen in South Armagh tonight. Police said three people were injured, one seriously. The army said a helicopter on the ground was damaged. Vernon Mann has just sent this report. The latest word we have here is that a single mortar was fired over the perimeter fence into the Joint Army Police Base at Cross Maglen, down by the border. Just one mortar, but unlike the ones at Heathrow Airport, this one went off, apparently with a big bang. Unconfirmed reports say it hit an army helicopter and set it on fire. Witnesses said it looked like a fireball. One man said it was like an earthquake. Two ambulances are at the scene, as indeed are the fire brigade. First reports say there are casualties, perhaps two to three people injured, but apparently no fatalities. Vernon Mann, ITN, in Belfast. In Belfast, three people were arrested after buses and vans were set on fire in loyalist areas. Police said armed men hijacked vehicles and then set them alight in what was a coordinated action. Earlier, the Ulster Unionist leader, James Molyneux, said the Downing Street Declaration on Peace in Northern Ireland had now run its course. I would be failing the people of Northern Ireland if today I neglected to warn the Irish government that they are steering a course which will prove disastrous for them and for us. A man and a woman have been found stabbed to death in a flat in Plymouth. Police said they were victims of a ferocious attack. The bodies were discovered in the top floor flat after friends raised the alarm. The dead couple hadn't been seen for several days. Detectives say the murders may be drug related. A Labour MP has said that any methods are legitimate to stop racial violence in Britain. Diane Abbott was addressing an anti-racism rally of 25,000 people in East London. Speakers warned the Liberal Democrats that they face defeat in council elections because they've allegedly failed to stamp out racism in Tower Hamlets. The march was colourful and noisy, but the message was serious because of the increase in attacks on Asian and black young people on these same streets. Several have been killed, others have serious injuries. Union leaders marched with relatives of victims like Kudas Ali, who's still in hospital. This march is not, not only important to the family, it, this march is important to the whole Bangladeshi community. Later at a rally, the Labour MP Diane Abbott told the crowd that any methods should be used, including on the streets, to stop the British National Party, who she linked to the attacks. We will do whatever it takes to drive you off the streets of this country. And I mean whatever it takes at a parliamentary level, at a local authority level, at a community level, and yes, at a street level too. The TUC had refused to allow Paddy Ashdown to address the rally because of allegedly racist leaflets issued by local Liberal Democrats. You know, you don't just have to go to places where you're going to speak. You'd have been very welcome to have come along just to listen. Today's rally reflects a growing concern about attacks on young black people alongside the political rise of the British National Party. The next big test of support for the BNP will come in the May local elections. John Draper, ITN, East London. Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization are preparing to meet tomorrow to talk about resuming the stalled Middle East peace process. This afternoon, Israeli troops shot and wounded 15 Palestinians during unrest in parts of the occupied territories. Palestinians elsewhere continued their anti-Israeli protests, even though the UN Security Council has condemned the massacre of 30 Arabs in Hebron. Now it's over to Gray Miller for news of the day sport. It was on as even at Twickenham, with England winning the game, but Wales taking the Five Nations trophy. England couldn't manage the 16-point margin they needed for the title, but they did score their first try for five matches. England hadn't scored a try all season. Sadly for Wales, they were saving them for today. 
10 minutes in and a taste of how rugby should be played. Phil de Glanville fed a rampaging Rory Underwood and the Welsh cover was wide open. Andrew's conversion was faultless, but this was also the day he was converted into a born-again halfback. For once he passed the ball instead of using the big boot upfield, it came as a surprise to Tony Underwood. Other openings were also thrown away. But England's total domination eventually brought more points, Rodberg gratefully accepting a misguided Welsh throw-in. But as Wales poured on more pressure to try and rescue their grand slam, they managed one breakthrough, Nigel Walker finishing. That apart, the England captain was satisfied. Everyone played well. Um, a bit frustrated we let them score a try. You know, that was frustrating. I thought we dominated them and uh, it was lovely. The, the big prize uh, the Grand Slam eluded us. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed with that. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, the side showed tremendous character in coming back in, in the face of fierce onslaught in England, who played exceptionally well today. But for Wales, the consolation of a championship and the fact that they're back as a force in world rugby. Peter Staunton, ITN, Twickenham. There was little to cheer about for the Scots at Murrayfield. The Hastings brothers both collected their 50th caps, but they still couldn't avoid defeat at the hands of the French. A milestone for the Hastings brothers, both winning their 50th. It was almost summing up our season that so near, really, and, and yet we were a long way away from it at the end of the day, and, and both in today's match and also the season. Manchester United's French star Eric Cantona looks set to miss their FA Cup semi-final after being sent off at Swindon. Cantona was shown the red card for kicking Swindon's John Moncur, who was lying on the pitch at the time. And with United down to ten men, Jan Fjortov scored a late equaliser to give bottom club Swindon an unexpected point. Ian Wright recorded his second hat-trick in consecutive league games as Arsenal impressed at the Dell. At the top of the first division, Nottingham Forest are now just two points behind Crystal Palace. Stan Collymore came back from injury to score with virtually his first touch of the game. Minutes later, he was sent off for violent conduct. In Scotland, Rangers extended their unbeaten run to 14 games with a comfortable win over St Johnston. Mark Haightley's 27th of the season maintained the champions' four-point lead at the top of the Premier Division. The West Indies are heading for a big lead in the second test in Guyana. Top scorer Brian Lara reached 167 before finally falling victim to Chris Lewis. At the end of day three, the West Indies were 487 for six. And that's tonight's news and sport from Graham and me. Good night. Good night. with our weather at the moment with winter grimly hanging on in Scotland especially in the north but some fairly good pleasant bursts of early spring sunshine further south now that was very much the case today ditto tomorrow back to the moment to hand first and as far as tonight goes it's plunging temperatures a widespread frost expected and then those nasty wintry showers in the very far north of Scotland as well as the west if you are out and about in these areas do take extra care so as we go into our Sunday morning for the bulk of the country most of England and Wales some good, pleasant spring-like sunshine around. Great morning for getting out and about. And then further north, there we see those wintry conditions, rain, hail, sleet and even snow, especially so in the northeast and the north of Scotland. And some of these just filtering southwards there. During the course of the afternoon, come round about lunchtime, we see bits and pieces of rain showing up there in the southwest. And then that gradually creeps across southern counties as well as up into South Wales. Otherwise, a fairly pleasant end to the day, with temperatures 6 to 8 in the south, that's the mid-40s, a chillier 3 to 5 or high 30s in the north. Here's tomorrow's summary.